welcome to Prophetic Dateline. We just have a really magnificent show. I have been looking forward to this for months. I know. Mike Literally talks about months. this a lot. Yeah. So, I think this is like his favorite subject, what we're going to talk about today. I think it's one of God's favorite subjects. Yes, so, I think so too. Tell them who we have with <laughs> we, us. Well, some of you who know him can see we have Rick Pino with us. Uh, Rick Pino is really considered a father of the modern day global worship movement and of something he's doing that is so needed. And a lot of people have been begging for this that I recall for a long time uh, is uh, he's doing worship coach mentoring. In fact, if you'd like to join worshipcoach.com, he's got a new book coming out and the, the, and the theme will be prophetic worship. Now, people need to know about that. And uh, so he's been in 79 nations. He lives in the Austin, Texas area. And he has his wonderful wife, Lindsay, and their beautiful three kids. So we are so glad that you are with us today, Rick. I'm so honored to be here. You guys are some of my favorite spiritual parents. Thank I love you. you guys so much. We love you too. And you know, Mike, remember, I don't know when we aired the show, but it had to be maybe in 2020 and Rick was on and also Klaus Kuhn and the word of the Lord went mm -hmm. about going back to Christ of the nations and redigging and he's a graduate. the wells of worship. Yeah, the wells of worship. And so and they grabbed a hold of that. Yeah. Both of them did. It was and what was produced from that was really amazing. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. Give, give us a little recap of that. Sure. So it's, it is, again, it's just an honor to be here with you guys. For those who don't know, Mike and Cindy were tremendously instrumental in my walk, especially in my early days when I was at Bible school at Christ for the Nations that we're about to talk about. And uh, Cindy had got this humongous word from God. Mike and Cindy hosted uh, basically 40 days of nonstop worship in a prayer room. I was the village worship leader just because I was a student there. And I was like, I guess I'll worship. And I landed up literally leading worship about 16 hours a day. I slept in the prayer room, lived in a van. It was, it was, you know, the humble beginnings. But man, these guys were a, a massive part of just helping to launch me out of there. And uh, so anyways, we were, I, I, it was probably 2020, end of 2020. Cindy had gave a word. Me and Klaus were on talking about worship on the, the prophetic dateline. And a word went out and it was just kind of like, hey, you guys should consider going back to Christ for the nations mm -hmm. and redigging the wells of worship. I call Klaus immediately after we hang up on the call. And I said, man, did you feel that? He goes, man, we got to do it. And I said, we cannot do it unless we get Carrie on board. Because for those who don't know, Klaus was kind of the, the spiritual pop, the worship father for me and Carrie Job, who both came out of that Christ for the nation season. And the three of us led worship together every day for two years, every single day for hours and hours. The Holy Spirit would come and there were many days we'd worship 12 hours without even blinking. They'd cancel classes because the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was so powerful. So I called I call Klaus. He said, man, we got to do it. We call Carrie immediately. And she goes, you guys are not going to believe this. Her, her parents live in Dallas is where the school is at. She goes, I was just in town visiting my parents and we just so happened to be driving by Christ for the nations and my spirit leapt and the Holy Spirit said, you should call Klaus and Rick and consider redigging the wells of worship oh, at oh, Christ for the amazing. nations. Oh, we were like, that. what? You're wow. kidding me. So long story short, the three of us banded together and we said, let's, you know, the three of us are going to host this together. Let's call everybody back because so many worship leaders, so mm -hmm. many songs so many movements have come out of that school over the past 50 years. So we have a meeting, and this is the nutshell version. I'll, I'll wrap it up here in a second. We get a meeting with the, the leaders at Christ for the Nations, and we pitch them the idea. We submit it to them. What do you guys think? And Golan, who is the, 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 um, you know, the, the director's son, he goes, this is it. And we go, what is it? He goes, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but it's the 50 year anniversary for Christ for the nations. We've been, we've been praying over how do we celebrate all that God has done. And we just can't, we just can't come to terms with maybe we should host a conference. A conference just doesn't seem like it's right. He goes, we should do this. And then I prophesy and I say, we should do 50 hours 
for 50 years. And that just kind of just kept the ball rolling. And then of course you guys were a part of it. Everybody came together. There was a couple thousand people. I mean, representations from every single season of Christ for the Nations. And I will tell you guys, you guys were there for, you know, uh, for a lot of it. And even in the last four hours of this 50 hours, the anointing was so powerful because there was so much humility. There was so much preferring of one another. We all just kind of laid down our agendas and said, Jesus, we're here for you. And God met us. It was one of the, the most amazing highlights, I think, of my whole entire life. It was incredible. Yeah, I was watching like one of the sessions like at 1.30 in the morning or something. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of people there. <laughs> oh, man, the whole time there were there were at least, you know, two or three hundred there the whole time. And then at the peaks, the whole entire thing was just packed with, the you know, a couple thousand everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was incredible. Yeah. It was yeah. it was special. It really was. Yeah. And so, you know, that that's very, very important because. The Lord has given us a revelation of Mike. You can say, I mean, about worship is the key. Yeah, a specific key. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me, how much do you want me to unpack? Well, this? just starting in June or so, no, just kind of encapsulate okay. it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we we have a 50 state prayer network called the Reformation Prayer Network. And Cindy and I were meeting with them, and uh, we had received a prophetic word that that we had been involved a lot in cities, but God wanted us to be involved in rural areas. And we were scratching our head going like, well, what would that look like? So we, we go no to every little city? That would look right, like. right. And then uh, we were meeting with our executive team of the prayer network and uh, Tom Schleter, who a lot of you watch this, you may know him, said, well, Cindy, don't you remember? You gave this amazing prophetic word and he pulls it out and reads it to us. And it was wow. a had a focus on the rural areas. And so uh, there was also another word that came out at, at that time in that meeting about the majesty of God. And so ultimately, as we process this whole thing, here's what the Lord said. I want you to go into the rural areas and begin to declare my majesty. And if you will declare my majesty in the rural areas, I will begin to manifest my majesty in the rural areas. And we took that to mean that you would expect to see the earth itself, the land itself, begin to rejoice. You know, the land's always looking for the revelation of the sons of God. It groans to see the revelation yeah. of the sons of God. Yeah. And we knew that worship would be the key to the fulfillment of this word. And... I honestly believe that when the earth begins to manifest God's majesty, you're going to see amazing crops. You're going to see the cattle begin to prosper. You're going to see uh, minerals and things like that, petroleum and, and uh, even gold and silver and things like that begin to manifest forth. But we had, we, I really begin to feel that, that what you tapped into with 50 days was a major key. Yeah, and also I'll just contextualize this and all these shows we've been doing uh, is that in the rural areas is where the farmers are. Yep. And where the farmers are, they're having to pay 700% here in the US more for their fertilizer and things that have happened in the Ukrainian war yeah. are affecting. So food shortages. Yeah, and there's propane shortages, yeah, which and, they use to produce the yeah. food. So anyway, so. We couldn't, we we're kind of scratching our heads why we should do this. Now, I feel, and I'm going to prophesy to you, Rick, and the Lord would say, I am going to anoint you to put out the word to the, the small towns. I mean, all over, not in here in America, but all over. The word is going to go out on releasing his majesty mm -hmm. and there's worship leaders says the lord that i have placed in all these areas i'm going to connect them with you i'm going to give you those connections and the lord says you are going to be part of actually healing the land mm -hmm. so yes. it's going to mitigate against the food shortages and the lord would just say get ready 
because I am taking you out of the box with worship. I'm taking you a whole new level. I'm going to give you revelation on a new level. And I want to speak to all the worshipers around the world. At least 50 nations watch this show. And, and I just feel like Rick is a prototype of what he's doing. In mm -hmm. fact, talk about the 50 uh, hours of worship you're doing. I think it's on the day this is airing. In Houston. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, hundred percent. So, uh, for those who don't know, you know, again, it kind of goes back to to the early days with Mike and Cindy in that forty day prayer room. I got so marked for Tabernacle of David, hosting the presence of God day and night. And and again, you know, we have ministries now like Inter International House of Prayer with Mike Bickle, and even you know Upper Room in Dallas, and people people connect. But man, if you were wine twenty years ago, they were just <laughs> in, in infancy. Like no one was really doing that. Right. And so I got so marked since then, uh, from all the way till now, we've hosted probably close to thirty fifty hour nonstop worship gatherings with thousands of people around the world. Uh, the next one starts April 21 and it goes through the 23rd. It's in Houston, Texas. Uh, I believe that this is airing today on the day that it kicks off. So, um, you know, if you're in Houston, come and join us. It's at newlifepresencemovement.org. Guys, we're literally what Mike and Cindy are kind of declaring and prophesying. We are gathering together with 25 to 30 different churches, worship leaders, teams, mm -hmm. And it's not, we're not even announcing who's coming. It's not about a celebrity. It's not about one man, one church, one lady, one ministry. This is about Jesus's presence being hosted for, for 50 hours nonstop. So uh, the, like the incredible worship. Yes. I will tell you guys this very quick testimony. You guys are going to love this. Last time that we hosted a 50 hour gathering, I was out mobilizing for it. There's usually, you know, one, two, three, four, five thousand people that show up for these. It's just incredible. I was out mobilizing for one, and there was a, a social worker who heard about this 50 hours. He had 20 drug addict men uh, that he was responsible to get rehabbed. He hears about the 50 hours. He goes to the judge and he goes, Judge, can I take these guys to this 50 hour gathering instead of sending them off somewhere? Can I take them to this worship gathering? And the judge kind of looks at him sideways and goes, Sure, why not? Smashes the gavel. Now it's illegal for them to not be there. He brings <laughs> these 20 drug addicts to the 50 hours. And I'm telling y'all, in the beginning, you know, 50 guys are kind of sitting, sitting in the back. You can see their silhouettes. They're just, uh, man, <laughs> 40 hours, you know, five hours in, 10 hours in, 20 hours, 30 hours. They're moving closer. They're getting more free. By the last couple of hours, these 20 guys are just losing it. They're the most wild worshipers in the front, tears pouring <laughs> down. After the 50 hours, the, 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 the uh, social worker guy and the main you know, uh, leader of the group come up to me and he's got tears in his eyes and he looks at me and he says, I didn't know that you could change this much, this fast. And I look back at him, I said, you can in the presence. And wow. uh, I, you know, a, a wow. little caboose to that testimony, I was telling this story uh, about a year ago. I was in uh, Philadelphia and I'm telling this story. I was doing a meeting out there. A man walks up to me after the meeting and he goes, hey, do you remember me? And I said, no, where do I know you from? He said, I was the social worker. I said, oh, you're wow. kidding me. I said, how are those guys doing? He says, every single one of them are still on fire still in love with Jesus. They're married. They have families. They have businesses. God has blessed them. It all happens in the presence, guys. It all happens wow. when we host the presence. Yep. Wow. Well, you know, as we're talking, Rick, and I just want to say to anyone, you know, you're a pastor or a worship leader, or maybe you own a guitar or whatever, or you're learning a few chords. I, I want to say to you, that God is raising up a great army of worshipers. And you know, you one of your fa famous songs is Raise Up an Army. But, Come on. but you know, saturation, we're going to saturate mm -hmm. our countries with worship, saturate these rural areas. Listen, God told us what to do about this food shortage. God told us what to do. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if we just do what we're called to do, he's going to do what he's called to do, what he, what he is, <laughs> you know, manifest who yeah. he is. And I sense 
like uh, the worship, the, the prayer movement, you know, in the 90s, we didn't have a 50 state prayer network and we mobilized and built that. And I mean, even like in the state of Texas with the Texas uh, prayer network, they have uh, mobilizers for every single county. And that's happened a lot across the US, wow. but it's gonna happen for the worship yeah. leaders now. Yeah. It's gonna happen. There's gonna be this, uh, this catalytic time when there's gonna be a whole movement, an army of sending Judah first. And it's gonna be like nothing we have ever known, nothing we have ever seen. You're gonna play a big part of that. Uh, you know, but maybe you're watching from another um, uh, nation and you're going, well, that's me. I, I'm going to do that. Or maybe yeah, you so want to. Me gusta es mío. Me gusta, I like it, it's mine. Like or it, or it's maybe mine. you want to uh, uh, connect with Rick at worshipcoach.com. You know, I, I want to say that, that this is your time. So how do you think these kind of things could happen? Help us like brainstorm a little yeah, bit. For example, if I am a worship leader, a little church in a rural community, there are a bunch of me because there's a bunch of little churches in rural community. Yep. How do we yep. how do we get them catalyzed in a movement that starts releasing and declaring the majesty of God? Yeah, I, I love this. I think, you know, one of the biggest things that we teach in our worship coach program to all these worshipers from around the world is that no act of worship is insignificant. Mm. No act of worship is insignificant. Even a small act of worship is very, very great in the spiritual realm. And so it doesn't matter if you're, you know, in a city like London or New York, you know, these big cities, LA or wherever, um, or if you're in a smaller town and no one, you know, no one's even heard of your town. <laughs> that doesn't matter because what matters is this, when we begin to worship and exalt Jesus, no matter big city, small town, uh, on a stage at a church or in our car, you know, driving to the post office, when we begin to exalt Jesus, something incredible happens. The Bible says in Psalm 22, 3, that he is enthroned in our praises, y'all. When we begin to worship him, that room no longer is just a normal room. That becomes a throne room. When we worship over our relationships, over our cities, over our towns, over our finances, over our, our families, we are literally pulling the throne of God into those situations. Ooh. And we are enthroning him. You know, the best spiritual warfare you can do is not to yell at the devil. It's to simply enthrone a greater principality, right? Amen. So instead of trying to, you know, do this or that in the second heaven, we need to understand we're seated with Christ right now in heavenly places. That means worship is not about us trying to get from this reality, breaking into there. No, no, no. We're seated with him already. We take his, his principles, his promises, and we prophesy them from there to here. And you can do that if you're in a small town, a big city. Um, I specifically feel Delhi and on my heart right now. If you're in New Delhi right now and God's calling you, go for it, man, because this works. As Mike is saying, worship is one of the master keys in the spirit. And it doesn't matter if it's big or small. There is no insignificant act of worship. Yeah, and I think, I think like, like we were talking about in some of our shows, uh, and we're going to talk about it further, about the diaspora of Ukraine going forth, and the Lord was showing us that these are literally seeds going around the earth, wow. and that they're going to release a new sound. There's something that in God's economy that he's pressing them out because we need, and Russia, you know, people are, I'm not saying leave Russia, but you know, people are leaving Russia if you happen to be there. And, you know, I mean, God is up to something that's a higher strategy, mm -hmm. the evil that Satan is doing, horrible evil. You know, we're not marginalizing that. But, um, you know, can, do you have any other testimonies like where people went in and did worship saturation? Absolutely. I mean, there's so many of them. Uh, before I, I share a testimony, let me also encourage everyone watching right now. We see in the book of Acts chapter two, that unity is the precursor for breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And so again, mm -hmm. if you're in a small town, if you're in a large city, if you can, the, the faster you can get corporate unity is the faster you can see corporate breakthrough. 
And so, you know, Mike is saying, what are some of the strategies? Get people together, man. Lay your, your agendas down. Lay, you know, it's not about our albums. It's not about, you know, a blue check on Instagram or followers. This is about the kingdom of heaven being hosted on the earth, the presence of Jesus going viral. So that's one of the big things that I teach as well. The, the purpose of corporate uh, worship, besides the obvious of exalting Jesus, is to get corporate unity because corporate unity leads to corporate breakthrough. So, you know, um, we, we've seen so many uh, incredible testimonies. Um, we have literally seen uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we sent a team to uh, the red light district in Amsterdam and they didn't, there wasn't really a big agenda. There wasn't really a big plan. It was just, Lord, you're calling us here. And the team went and they kind of had guitars and djembes and they're like, seeking the Lord. What do we do? Where do we go? And the Lord just stopped them in the middle of, you know, the street. It wasn't really in the red light district. Uh, it was just kind of in the street They're in front of this building. And the Lord said, I want you to worship me. And they they start worshiping. And one of the kids comes up and says, I feel like we're supposed to worship for 12 hours. And oh. they all kind of looked at each other and there was only like maybe, you know, seven or eight of them there. And they kind of looked around like, well, okay. And, and they just went for it. They just begin to worship. Whoa. They take turns. As soon as their fingers start hurting, they pass it on to this gal and <laughs> he pass it on to that guy. And they're just worshiping, praying, crying out. And they just worship, worship, worship for 12 hours straight. And, you know, at initially they just, they felt like, okay, we accomplished our assignment. We don't see anything yet in the natural, but hey, you know, we, we were obedient. So they, they did the worship. Well, the next morning they're in their hotel rooms and they're, they're flipping through the news and they see the building on, on the screen, on the TV, come to find out that was like this secret brothel that nobody knew about. And it was like oh one of the, the strongholds and they had just busted it, right? They oh like, they my. busted it. And it's, it's crazy because I, I believe that our worship has the power to dethrone powers and principalities, y'all, because the weapons of our warfare, they're not physical things. They are spiritual things. And a lot of times they are foolish things that confound the wise. Something as foolish as I'm just going to worship. But y'all, God is still in the business of using the slingshot of our worship to <laughs> slay giants. Oh, mm, that's yeah. so good. You know, Cindy, I, I am, I'm reminded of when we had 30, the I-35 Highway of Holiness movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some of you who, who may remember that, I will tell you a little about it. We felt that we were to establish houses of prayer along Interstate 35 after uh, Isaiah 35. Well, Highway major of Holiness. Highway of Holiness. We're, not, we were not declaring that Interstate 35 in the United States was the Isaiah 35 Highway, okay? Although but CNN said we did. CNN but. said that, but we did not say that. <laughs> but what happened is we had 17 houses of prayer all the way from Laredo, Texas, all the way up to the Canadian border. And um, we were just covering that in prayer. And I was just thinking so many, there's so many of the places along Interstate 35 that are rural areas. You know, there's so many communities there. And can you imagine just taking that as one example of what could happen, adopt your highway and, and determine That's where awesome. are the communities Let's start awesome. getting, call together those who are worship leaders, even in small churches, have the communities get together and start declaring the majesty of God using worship. Because in heaven, that is what is going on. There is the worship and declaration of the majesty of the King of Kings going on right now. So let's bring heaven to earth and just permeate uh, as an example, Interstate 35, because when we did that, awesome. other people around the United States said, well, we want to adopt our highway in prayer. And so they did that, yep. too. So before long, all these highways in Texas or not Texas, but in the United States had people who were putting intercessory prayer all along their interstate and declaring it to be God's highway. So, you know, you're writing on prophetic worship, Rick. Uh, what is prophetic worship? That's a great question. I think it's very important to, uh, to b before we can understand what prophetic worship is, we need to understand what is the prophetic and how does it work? Um, you know, the foundation of what is a prophetic, how does it work? It's found in Revelation 19.10b. 
It says that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. That means whatever testifies to the lordship of Jesus is prophetic. So I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to just have prophetic worship. I want to have a prophetic marriage, prophetic relationships, <laughs> prophetic finances. And so that it, because my life is pointing as a testimony to the lordship of Jesus, it just so happens when I worship, the byproduct is I also have prophetic worship because I'm living a prophetic life. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you know, the, there, there's a lot of layers to it, but, uh, you know, um, first Corinthians 14, uh, the prophetic is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Um, you know, I think a lot of times we need to get the word of Christ dwelling in us richly so that we can begin to prophesy his words and his thoughts to edify, exhort, and comfort. Um, when we approach worship this way, we begin to move into that prophetic spirit. It's not just spontaneous. A lot of times people think, well, we're not on the set list anymore, so we're doing prophetic worship. Not necessarily. There's a difference uh, between spontaneity and the prophetic. The way I say it is this, the most simple definition for prophetic worship or for prophetic anything for that matter, we want the right thing at the right time. Mm -hmm. We want the right thing at the right time. And the best way to know what is the right thing at the right time You've got to, you've got to have intimacy with Jesus in the place of his word in the place of fellowship with him in consistency in prayer. And when you do that and his words dwelling in you richly, you can release the word of the Lord powerfully, whether in song or through word like mama Cindy does, or, you know, in any kind of creative way. Yeah. You know, uh, I think that this challenges us though, uh, no more worship as usual, or maybe, you know, just traditional, <laughs> like three fast yeah, songs, like two that. slow songs. Uh, I know at our church Trinity here in South Dallas of the pastors having, you know, preaching shorter so the worship leaders can come in at the end mm -hmm. and just release the presence wow. of God. And, you know, he's mixing it up. I mean, um, I, I really think that that God is challenging us. Worship is not the warm up show, you know, <laughs> it, it is an integral part of the, the worship of, of Jesus. The worship of Jesus is the main attraction of all of heaven. It's the, the worship of Jesus is the main attraction of all of eternity. You know, there's a lot of theology going around about heaven coming to earth. And sometimes they make it about, well, you know, heaven's coming to earth. There's diamonds appearing or gold dust, all that stuff's fine. But what are they doing in heaven right now? They're mm -hmm. worshiping. I will tell you what they're not doing. They're not praying for the sick. That's very wonderful. And we need to keep praying for the sick now. They're not preaching to the lost. That's wonderful. Keep preaching to the lost now. But what is heaven doing right now? All of heaven is worshiping. So if we really want to see heaven come to earth, we can't just do the two fast and three songs, three songs only. <laughs> We've got to do what heaven does. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys right now, and I'll just put this out there. I see from the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation, the only appropriate response to the nonstop beauty, the nonstop worth, the nonstop majesty, the only appropriate response is nonstop worship. And that's why worship is going to, for eternity, go, just be perpetually going because we're always going to be at the beginning of God. And therefore, mm -hmm. our response to him in the place of worship is always just going to be just beginning. We got to yeah, tap I, into that. Yeah, I think, I think maybe we've had a worship deficit, <laughs> you mm. know, and, and uh, we all want to be worshipers of God. You know, but but either you don't know how or there isn't time, but I think it's very important to learn. And that's why I think go to worshipcoach.com, you know, uh, learn how, you know, people, people, you know, if we don't like to worship on earth, what do we do in heaven for Pete's sakes? You know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, oops, you know, yeah. maybe I should have worshiped some more, you know, it's not look, it's not just all people should worship all creation desires to worship 
I know it may yes. sound strange to those who have a Western worldview, but the Bible is full of uh, talking about the trees of the field clapping their hands. Yes, yes, trees, yes. You know, all these different aspects, which you go, well, wait a minute. It almost sounds like the earth is a living being. Well, it's all held together by the word of his power. And, yes. and what I'm thinking is maybe we can set up a harmony of not only the voices of the people who are declaring God's majesty, that the response back is the earth itself beginning to echo back the majesty of the creator. Yeah, I mean, I, 100%. Think, I think that, you know, uh, uh, we could say that we are now hearing of abundant harvest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cotton harvest in Texas, you know, abundance. And the prayer leaders, they're up at like 5 a.m. every morning yeah. decreeing over the state, you know, on these prayer calls and stuff. And I just feel like, Rick, that you're tapping into this in such a significant way. It's like, okay, if there was a worship deficit, then you need to saturate with 50 hours. You understand? It's yes. it's like a kickstart. Yes. It's like you're priming the pump, you know? And, uh, but, but I literally can see, uh, and we're going to ask Rick, pray for you before we go, because I really sense Mike and Rick that there are young worship leaders all over the earth. Maybe you're just a child. Maybe you're little right now. But somehow you're just drawn to make music. You're just drawn to, yep. to, to the things of God, you know, and you don't know why, but, but you're being anointed to do that. So would you just pray for us, please, and pray for 100%. them? 100%. Yeah. And, and I love this word, Cindy, because I was marked as an 11-year-old. I just told this story the other day. Uh, wow. You know, I was, you know, I was kind of at the tail end of the tapes you know, when people still had <laughs> tapes. And uh, I remember on my 11th birthday, a friend of mine handed me a tape and it was a worship tape. I put it in in my room and the presence of God broke out of my room as an 11 year old. Wow. And I begin to cry out as an 11 year old. And it's, it's significant to wow. me now because I have a 12 year old daughter and I'm praying, God, you marked me at this age, you mm -hmm. know? And so Lord, we declare right now over each and every person watching, that they are a worshiper first and an everything else second. Lord, we are worshipers first and everything else second. So Lord, I ask over this broadcast that you would just release an impartation of worship, an impartation even of prophetic worship to be released over each and every person. Lord, give us strategies for our towns. Give us strategies for our cities, for our families for our relationships, for our finances, God. Give us strategies, Lord. I know that worship is one of the master keys. So Lord, right now, I even hear the Lord saying, even small keys can open big doors. So Lord, we even turn the keys of worship right now. Come on, there is no insignificant act of worship. So Lord, we release that. And Lord, we declare it over each and every person. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, thank you, Rick. Wow, that Woo! went fast. That went so fast. That is good. Yeah. Well, there's, I just say that there's more to come. You know, as this big, this movement, we may have just, just like we spoke about redigging the wells of worship at Christ for the Nations. Uh, who knows what may come forth from this? I have a suspicion that some amazing <laughs> things are going to happen because if this is truly the Lord, it's going to resonate with leaders. You may be a pastor in a small yes. community. Going yes. like, hey, I want our community to get a, to be a chance to get a chance to get in on this. Call together the worship leaders from yeah. all the, the churches around yeah. and, and seek the Lord together and see how can we begin to declare the majesty of God in our little rural community. God will respond. And over the fields and over the crops. And, and, and over the crops. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Well, thank you. Any final word before we go off the air? I love Mike and Cindy Jacobs. Those are my <laughs> final words for today. <laughs> we love you too. We I love you guys so much. More. We have to get together yes, more. Well, yes, thank you yes. for watching Prophetic Dateline. And, you know, just take what God is saying to you. Look, don't wait for somebody else to do it. You say, I heard the word, I'm going to do it. God bless you. And go you. to the event in Houston. Yeah, go to, yeah, year, if, you have a chance. Well, if you're, yeah, like, if if, in if, Houston. yeah, or if you see this before, it could be, we don't know when and wherever you see it, April 21st to 23rd uh, at New Life Church or 
importantly, go to worshipcoach.com and join the movement. Thank you, Rick. Right. Thank you for your time. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, Bye, everybody. Guys.